Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel and back to my awesome hair. I mean, look at that. That I mean, it's glowing with that sun behind it. I mean, that looks straight out of heaven or something. I don't know what to tell you. But uh, anyways, I've got uh, a bike, the UHVO from Inurao. This is a full suspension bike for $1,400. You have a front fork spring suspension, air suspension in the rear. Uh, these guys have a ton of models to choose from. They've been around for a little while, so pretty established company. But anyway, uh, let me jump into the review. First, starting with the speed test. It's time to see how fast this bike can go. This is the speed test. Now, the power we got to work with is a 350 watt nominal, 500 watt peak geared hub motor in that rear wheel. That is powered by a 36 volt, 13 amp hour battery that you can remove, and that takes five to six hours for a recharge time. Now in the menu, you can actually change the pedal assist levels from uh, three up to nine. I do have it set from zero to five. And they say the fifth mode can take a rider up to 20 miles per hour. Also in the settings, you can change the power output from six up to 62. Now there's no way this bike is gonna go 62 miles per hour. I don't know why they just don't like have a more realistic setting for that. That's kind of the standard with uh, a lot of bikes. But anyway, I do have a set to the highest power output, 62. And I'm gonna show you how fast it can go on all five speed modes, starting off with number one. I got one out of the five battery bars gone, so about 90% power. And speed mode one, here we go. Looks like seven for speed mode one. Barely any jump there. I got nine on two. 13 for three. 18 for four, and 23 for five. Well, 24 for five. We'll go with 24, I like it better. So I got four over the speed rating. Always nice for a bike to go faster than what it's rated for. Uh, this bike is designed more for like single track riding, so I'm not gonna have a super fast acceleration, but I wanna show you that anyways. The bike does have some weight to it at 55 pounds. It can carry a rider up to 375 pounds, which is a pretty high capacity. First, gonna show you how long it takes to get to 20 on pedal assist five, and then on throttle. Pedal assist level five first on the first gear as well. Here we go. And that power kicks in and just under a revolution. More abrupt than I thought it was gonna be. Still pretty smooth and gentle, but faster than uh, I was expecting. And already up uh, past 22 and about a block. So, you know, not a super fast acceleration like I, I was telling you. And now the throttle, which is on the left side of the bike. Here we go. Now the power delivery is instant, very slow. But uh, as soon as I pressed it, it did kick on. And that's even a slower acceleration than with pedal assist. Slowly creeping up to 20, there we go. So it's not gonna throw you towards the back of the bike. Very gentle and nice acceleration. I wanna show you the range when riding on just a flat paved surface. This does have a range riding up to 30 miles. I do have a full charge on the bike and I'm gonna keep it about 20 miles per hour. Very few stops too. This is just gonna be kind of a cruising test. Let's see what it can do. First battery bar did pretty good at 6.03 miles. Okay guys, I got my microphone plugged in again. It's trying to tell you some features and specs about the bike. It's not the most clean or tidy bike. There is a bunch of wires in front of the handlebars. They've got a few curly cues on there to maintain it a little bit. But once it gets past the stem, it's all internal. So from that point towards the back of the bike, it's all nice and clean. Now let me talk a little bit about geometry. This is definitely a mountain bike. It's got a huge wheelbase of 46 inches and not a bad standover height at 30 inches. It's kind of like a mid-step design. I'm 5'11 and I can just stand over it with about six, seven inches to spare. You are positioned like a typical mountain bike style riding where you're hunched over, leaned over towards the front of the bike. I like that because it lowers your center of gravity and so you have better stability. The reach is 22.4 inches. It's a very spacious bike. There's a lot of room. I don't feel cramped or crowded at all. 
It is well balanced. I could easily ride this without any hands right when I got on. I haven't gone too fast on it yet. I've hit 25 miles per hour down this uh, smaller hill and it just glide. There was no shaking, no wobbling, no uh, death wobble. It honestly feels like a much more expensive bike than it is. Roughly two battery bars gone and I've gone 9.37 miles and I've had a mix of straight throttle and pedal assist. In the cockpit, there's Comfort Mountain Bike version 26.8 inch handlebars. I've got some very nice handling, no complaints there. I've done some weaving in and out of the trail on the smooth trail. <laughs> well, I'll talk more about the handling uh, in the off road test, but for paved trail riding, it is fantastic. The grips look and feel like a commuter style bike rather than a off road mountain bike. If you plan on taking this off road, I'd switch those out to something a little bit smaller. It's got a Shimano 7 speed underneath the grip. It's one at a time using your thumb coming down and then your finger one at a time coming back up. The Velo saddle is quite hard. I'll just be honest with you guys. I would definitely switch that out to something a little bit more comfortable, especially if you're gonna be using this for a commuter. Well, next there's Kenda 27.5 by three inch all-terrain tires. Really not the beefiest or best tire I've seen. I think they put their money into other features. Well, this is a full suspension bike, which is pretty awesome for the price tag. In the front, there's a Zoom Sans 100 millimeter fork. And then in the back, there's KS A5 air rear suspension with 165 millimeters of travel. So you got a ton of travel on this bike. I'll speak more about that later. Roughly two battery bars gone and I've gone 9.37 miles. I wanna talk a little bit about the throttle and pedal assist sensitivity. So for the throttle, if I just gently press it, it takes about, a, about an inch for the power to engage. And then again, the more you press it, the more power you have. Uh, pretty easy to stay at a certain speed, which is nice. And then cruising at 15 miles per hour, if I release the throttle, instantly cuts out. If I re-engage, that's about a half a second delay before you can feel the power, before I felt the power come back on. For the pedal assist on level one and the seventh gear, uh, a lot, of, a lot of resistance if I try to hit my normal cadence. On level two, I'm almost, I can reach my normal cadence, but still a lot of pressure. And level three, like most bikes, that's where the bike just takes over. Just gotta keep the pedals turning. Pedal assist four, again, the bike's doing all the efforts. Uh, I don't have to increase my cadence that much to feel some resistance. Then on pedal assist five, when going 20 miles per hour, if I stop pedaling, that does take about a half a second for the power to kick off. And then when going around, let's see, 15 miles about per hour, if I start pedaling on the highest gear, there's one, one and a half is when the power comes back on. So that's average for pedal assist reaction time that I've seen for, especially in this, for this price range. I've done around three battery bars. I've lost three battery bars and I've gone 13.53 miles. I think I may have judged too harshly. Uh, the range running was 30 miles and the app recorded 25.46, which is, that's pretty awesome for going, you know, 20, 21 miles per hour. And I had 1,135 feet of elevation gain. I did miss that second or that last battery bar update. I was just enjoying the ride too much. I'm gonna charge it back up and do another range test. This is the second range test on paved roads, paved trails. So inconsiderate motorcycles, so inconsiderate. <laughs> so I'm gonna have a lot of stop and go. I'm gonna ride the bike a little bit harder than before. I do have a full battery and then, uh, well, depending on the speed limit, I'll just follow the speed limit. This road, is, uh, road here is uh, 25 miles per hour. So here we go. So uh, this is my first battery bar gone. I've gone 5.95 miles. I just lost my second battery bar and I've gone 8.51 miles and still just climbing up this 
maxing the bike out. Speed limit on this road is 35 miles per hour. Can't hit that, but uh, I am full throttle. We're down to around two battery bars and I've gone 12.73 miles. And there's a big giant red wall. Well, I missed that last battery bar. Uh, it's, it seems to, the last two seem to go at the same time. And so range test was over and this bike kicks butt for paved trails, 19.87 uh, miles. But check out this elevation gain, 3,488 feet. Now, if you remember from the first range test, uh, I think I got like 25, 26 miles with that. And I, I'm gonna, I got 20 on this one, almost 20. And this was riding hard, lots of stop and go. Um, I'm, in, I'm pretty impressed. Let me run through the uh, control pad and LCD screen. Kind of a smaller screen. Power button is on the right side. The other button there is the, uh, to look at different uh, readouts, like your mode button. Plus and minus here, of course, to change the pedal assist levels. Hold the plus button to turn on the lights. There's a headlight here. For some reason it's not on. Oh, it's a little short circuit there. Looks like I gotta tighten something back there, but it does mostly work. And then you have a manual uh, tail light. Uh, this isn't connected to the bike, so you do have to turn that on manually. And then hold down the minus button for the walk assist mode. And that's pretty much it. a little bit more about the bike now that I'm off-road. Got my microphone plugged in again, just doing the third range test. And I'm actually really impressed with how this is handling. This is uh, performing a lot better than I thought it was going to. It does not feel like a $1,500 bike. I thought the tires were gonna be a little bit uh, worse than they are. I was gonna suggest switching those out for some better tires, but I, they're, they're doing just fine. Well, the suspension for off-road is kicking butt. I've yet to bottom out the front fork. I've hit a few small rock gardens. It does shake and rattle the bike quite a bit, but for a $1,500 bike, those shocks are awesome. I can feel the bike kind of giving and playing as I'm hitting these potholes and dips. It makes it very enjoyable and comfortable to ride. If you guys are looking for an off-road affordable bike, this is the best one I've tested yet. That wraps up the off-road range test. I got 18.11 miles with 1,179 feet elevation gain. And uh, that's, that's pretty awesome. This is a killer bike for off-road. I am very impressed with it. Uh, you couldn't, it'd be hard to find something better for off-road riding on these types of trails for this price range. There's no hill rating for the bike, but the motor produces 45 newton meters of torque. And I've got a good size hill here. I'm gonna put this into the easiest gear. I'm on speed mode five. I've got one battery bar missing. And this hill is two blocks long, 18 to 20% grade. Really starting to climb here. And uh, as you can see going seven miles an hour, I am putting some effort in. The bike's definitely not doing all of the work. Feels like I'm giving about 15, 20%. Legs are starting to get a little bit of a burn going right now. <laughs> this is just a insane hill. Most products I don't, I don't take here. Only the special unique ones <laughs> that I feel can handle it. This is doing okay. Kind of bouncing back and forth between seven and eight miles an hour. Whew. Uh, coming over the top, going to increase my gears. Yeah, so seven miles an hour was the lowest speed I got. Again, you do have to work to get up the hill, up a 18 to 20% grade. Um, honestly, I felt like I could go even higher, even steeper. I would have to put more effort in, but the motor sounded good. There was no strain from the motor at all. It's actually very quiet. 
So pretty awesome hill climbing ability. Uh, this is the brake test. The bike comes with Promax 180 millimeter disc brakes with Promax levers. Gonna head down the same hill. I just came up for the hill test and show you how well they work. Get a little bit of speed here. Lightly pressing the levers. No pulsating, nice and smooth. More speed, hard press. Woo! Uh, you stop pretty good. There's no pulsating, very, very smooth. What you would expect for hydraulic brakes. Get going again. Nice and quiet. Love the sound of the hydraulic brakes. Then one last hard test. That back wheel's skidding quite a bit, but uh, yeah, it's got uh, pretty good braking power. The UHVO has a water resistant rating, a one year warranty, and free shipping in the US. And you can save 3% with the code I've got in the description. Well, that wraps up the review. If you couldn't tell, I did enjoy this bike, especially for the price tag. It's got some great features, great suspension for a you know, $1,300, $1,400 bike. If you wanna pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also be sure to check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.